Well, here we are at the home of John Rennick and his workshops, the national land speed record holder from the Bonneville Salt Flats. And here we are going into the workshop where it all takes place, all the preparation for all of this stuff, and there's enough equipment and machinery. And here we are on the rolling road. We're about to have a go. This is the most well equipped workshop I've ever seen. It's got everything in here. And here's the actual rolling road. And there's the bike. We're about to test it. So, just for the camera, we've put the tank on. And here's the name Epimetheus. Now, this is Ed, the assistant <laughs> engineer. Assistant, no. assistant uh, co worker. Co worker. Don't call me an engineer, I'm a plumber. <laughs> <laughs> right, here's John Reddick himself. Good afternoon, John. Good afternoon. What are we going to do this afternoon? Well, it's basically uh, the eternal search for more power. All right, so there's the bike. Oh, you can take the tank cover off, Ed. There we go. You can see the Vincent engine in there. But right down here is the nitrous oxide bottle. And here's the big old Vincent engine in all its glory. Extended rear frame with a decent wheel on the back. And to remain true to form, there's a proper set of hydraulics on the front. Wouldn't be a Vincent without them. Yeah, the back wheel is now on the rolling road, and underneath here is all the concrete and the weights. Um, and there's the register. And, and here's Master John, the computer whiz, uh, with his computer uh, system, which will record all the results. Yeah. With an old tower up there. Uh, uh, this is nitrous on then, is it? This is nitrous oxide bottle open, but it's got its own electrical system and its own fuel pump. Because when you put this extra oxygen in, of course you have to put more fuel in. Right. And another, another fuel pump sends fuel to the jets that are in inlet port. You see four jets in each inlet port, two nitrous oxide systems and two fuel systems. Wow. And Gardner carburetors. Gardner carburetors, courtesy of my old mate Ron. So here's the exhaust extractor coming along. So what happened there then, John? Well, what happened was that uh, that time it was a proper nitrous oxide run, and it pulled uh, the new, the big paddles to 7,000 rpm of the engine, which is a safe limit, right. uh, which means it's going like smoke. So uh, well, how was it for you, Ed? Oh, it was wonderful. <laughs> yeah, just so here's John Rennick's computer, all modern stuff. And if you look at the printout screen here of that run that he's just done, they're all excited. Look at that curve going right up there. And uh, how many brake horse do you reckon that well, is in the order of? Yeah, it, probably about 180. 
From an old Vincent engine. From an old Vincent engine, an old clunker, <laughs> yes. But look at that, Ed. Yeah. Uh, the top part of the curve is looking at exhaust gas analysis. These dips are when I change gear. But what that's showing from our uh, knowledge is that this thing is running just about spot on. Oh, certainly, no question. <laughs> Absolutely. We'll do a nine second, no bother at all. Especially with a new automatic gear changing system. Oh, right. Uh, which, I don't know if it should go on the film at all, really. <laughs> It's, it's top secret. It's top secret, that's <laughs> right. Yeah, you'd have, we'd have to kill you if you found <laughs> that. Yeah, that's oh, right, yeah, exactly. You'd never leave here alive. <laughs> but what it means, finally, is that where previously I'm looking at, trying to look at the rev counter, trying to see where I'm going, trying to get a feel of things, and it meant that when I hit the button, it wasn't necessarily exactly the right time. Particularly the first gear change, when everything's hectic off the line. Uh, but now we've got a system where I'll get it off the line, nail it like that and it'll change exactly when we want it to 7000 rpm and continue doing that till the end so i'll just have to it's the old farts uh, elimination element really that's what it's about <laughs> so that i don't make have, well i i can't make as any simple mistakes as possible it yeah. keeps it super simple it just lets me do my thing off the line which is a bit of an art <laughs> right here she is all cooling off so how was it for you then john all right well it was very nice actually it's going very well and, right. Uh, which would be splendid for the next serious event. So when's the next big one then, the John? The next big one will be the Brighton Speed Trial. Yeah. So are you going to be there as well, Ed? Definitely. Right, we'll see you in Brighton. Indeed, murdering them. <laughs> ah, brilliant, well done. Bring it on. <laughs> right, I'm going to turn the nitrous off before it blows us all up. <laughs> now that <laughs> is not an original standard engine, John. How many cc's is it now? It's 1665 cc's. And the boring stroke? Is 100 by 106. Wow, so that's some big engine. It is some big engine, yeah. And what are you running through, Gardner carbs? Gardner carbs, yes. And so floats it, here? Sorry? The floats? Floats, yeah, they're SU floats. And the injection system here? It's the Gardner system, you see. It's, no, oh, the oh, this is nitrous oxide. That's where your nitrous, nitrous goes in. Nitrous oxide goes in and extra fuel. Yeah. And the primary drive is primary by? primary drive is homemade completely. A belt or chain? Belt. Oh, really? Yes. Very effective belt. Oh. I've never had a belt failure. Brilliant. And so what's all the electronics down here? Electronics is all very simple, actually. It's two pumping systems. There's two fuel pumps, one to feed the SUs and the other to feed the nitrous fuel system. Yeah. Uh, various uh, pressure controllers, two pressure controllers, and the nitrous oxide bottle, which simply feeds solenoids that uh, allow it to flow to the jets in the inlet ports. So where's your automatic gear change system? The automatic gear change is there. Just a bit of electronics. Yep. And what that does, it does, it, it pushes the button that I normally operate by hand yep. uh, automatically as a function of RPM, and that operates an air system that drives the Vincent selector uh, cam plate directly right. by Just compressed air. Over the other side. And where do you keep your compressed air? The compressed air is kept in the chassis, in this chassis member. So a typical Phil Vincent idea, use the frame for storage. Precisely. Yes, there you go. You weren't a bad lad. <laughs> right, hang on a minute. So, start again. Uh, here is an air cylinder, uh, which takes compressed air from our chassis member, uh, operated by electrically controlled air valves, that uh, when the button is hit, the solenoid opens the air valve and sends air to the cylinder, which operates a, a notching plate that's connected to a shaft that drives the cam plate directly. So straight into the gearbox? Straight into the gearbox. No, this no, happens at such speed that the normal uh, notched cam plate won't hold the thing in the requisite gear. So we also have air supply to another pneumatic uh, plunger system that gets hold of the cam plate uh, and stops it from going too far. So it's pneumatically driven and it's pneumatically stopped. Wow. And of course that happens in a part of a second, which is the whole object to save time, of course. Well, you're running out of time, are you, John? We're always running out of time on all fronts. <laughs>